Hey, Bulls and Bears, how's everybody doing? I hope you are well. Well, according to some, and not just some, according to many people, uh, we're headed for a huge deflationary slash blackout event coming up on the solar eclipse, which is what, April 8th, which is Monday. Um, you guys know me. I don't hold these dates to any sort of um, reality or situation coming down on this date that day that day right when it comes down it'll be a surprise to all of us here uh when it comes down i say when it comes down in other words there will be some sort of market shaking event uh that i think will bring these markets down i think it's going to come more out of the news side of things um and the uh the global conflicts type of thing uh and i think we're going to be attacked here on u.s soil but i don't think it's going to be a date that's going to be completely a date that everybody's uh, looking at or expecting, like April 8th. I could be wrong. Prepare, have food, water, uh, emergency essentials out of the system here, cash readily available just in case. Uh, I know I've been uh, stacking, so to speak, for years uh, with those emergency uh, items set aside, you know, as well as a real tangible forms of money, including non dollar assets that you might be able to trade with because after a few days, uh, people may not be looking for money. They may be looking for something else, uh, but that's a whole separate topic here. Let's go ahead and get into the latest news here. The economy continues to implode on Main Street while Wall Street continues to look pretty darn good. We've got the Dow Jones uh, over 39,500, depending on the day you're watching this. I'm recording this here on April 3rd. Um, as I said, the markets can be propped up uh, to infinity. And look at 2020, the market should have came down in 2020, uh, not just the stock market, the housing market should have came down. There should have been a between a 60 to 80 percent crash in the housing market in 2020. When you look at the number of people that had to have more, uh, they had to have moratoriums or foreclosure forbearance. Right. Which was a lot more than the number of people that got foreclosed back in 2008, 2009. So the crash would have been much worse compared to back then. But of course, that was not allowed to happen. We had record levels of money creation, throwing money into the economy. And uh, of course, the rest is history. It seems like they're not going to allow any sort of housing market correction because that would lead to broader negative implications on the economy. And now we've got this uh, program in California to help first time home buyers get into a home. And instead of uh, allowing prices to come down where people can actually afford them without having some. Uh, assistance they're just going to hand out more and more assistance we've got this i don't even know what it's called the california dream buyer program something like that well let's get into some information here that i just uh wanted to bring up here this further underpins our view here on the economy and we've been pretty much right on it here uh let's look at this here seven in ten adults surveyed are stressed about money cnbc finds uh that goes right along with the number of people approximately living paycheck to paycheck, which has been between 60 and 70% for years now. Uh, you won't see a, a major crash in the economy, though, even though those numbers are very dire, because as long as people have access to credit, as long as they can borrow more money, um, things are going to continue to chug along and look pretty normal, because as long as people can still spend, even if it's borrowed money, uh, the economy is going to look pretty normal. Right. It's when the credit stops, when the credit limits get shut down or stop being increased, that's when the big problems come up. Or when you see the entire system freeze up or go dark and back to what we talked about at the beginning of people are predicting that April 8th is going to be uh, a big uh, situation here where banks could go down. The power grid could go down. Who knows? Solar flares, what they're saying because of the um, eclipse. I think it's a big nothing burger. But but again, be prepared. I'm not going to sit here and say don't be prepared because these things can happen anytime right uh, not just because of an eclipse but anytime right the whole system is so fragile the banks for example the banks uh would have went in 2020 the banks would have completely um imploded and again in 2023 the banking system would have completely imploded just with a few banks that failed fdic remember did not have enough money to cover those deposits they had to go out and uh team up with the treasury and the fed to basically create the money out of thin air to rescue the banks otherwise it would have been game over because a lot of those billionaires a lot of depositors most of them actually would have lost 
their money. Why? Because FDIC doesn't have even 1% of what they should have to cover all these deposits. Here, let's take a look at a couple uh, statistics here. And uh, first, the photo, FDIC offices right here. I wonder how much money they'd have if they didn't have to buy this rug. I wonder how, much, <laughs> wonder how expensive that rug was. Are these gold trim doors? Hopefully not real gold. Um, I'm going to say no. If it was real gold, then somebody would have probably came and, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> pulled them off, pulled them off the frames and took them away. As of December 2023, the FDIC deposit insurance, uh, as of fourth quarter, deposit insurance fund stood at $121 billion. It's gotten even less since then, I think. But just uh, around $122 billion. Remember that number. Uh, here's the total deposits in U.S. banks, folks. As according to the Fed uh, out of St. Louis here, $17.4 trillion as of January. So $17.4 trillion in deposits being protected, quote unquote protected or insured by $122 billion. Folks, how does this make any sort of sense? And if the FDIC, which basically has, bit, well, looks like less than 1% of the deposits they need, if they are supposed to cover the deposits and if they can just go to the Fed and the treasurer every time a bank fails, What's the purpose of FDIC in the first place? It looks like a big scam, right? If they just have to go to the FDIC, if the FDIC just has to go to the Fed and the Treasury and have this money created, aka printed, why even have FDIC? Why not just have the Treasury and the Fed over here ready to print the money? And then you could say it's not just 250000 that's covered, it's infinity because we could just create the endless amounts of money. You see what I'm saying here? So on its face, this whole thing is a joke these institutions are a joke uh the markets are a joke they're propped up by the mega billionaires that own about 90 percent of stocks books the whole thing is a joke and that's why a lot of us here are, are just waiting for the day where this whole thing comes down it's going to be painful a lot of people are going to get wiped out on their retirement accounts if these markets are allowed to implode uh here's the thing though if they're not allowed to implode it's going to be even worse folks because inflation is going to keep climbing, keep climbing, and they're going to keep on scratching their heads. I'm talking about the, the talking heads are going to scratch their heads. And they're going to say, no one saw this coming. This was a surprise. This was a shock. The inflation didn't come down. But yet we've got a Powell out there, Jay Powell out there, still talking about rate cuts, even though inflation uh, really hasn't come down at all. It's slowed down, but the cost of living hasn't come down. But yet, even though things are too expensive, 70% of people living paycheck to paycheck, and stressed out, according to that CNBC article, a recent survey, seven out of 10 adults stressed out. Even though people are already stressed out about finances, we need to cut rates? Really? Just, things don't just add up here, folks. This just doesn't, doesn't make any sense anymore. Um, why? Ask yourself, why won't we allow deflation? People need a lower cost of living. People need deflation. Of course, that'll rip the clothes off. And everyone will see what's really happening here. Uh, let's look at this here. Speaking of rising poverty and uh, debt uh, and stressful financial situations, as we know, crime gets worse as the economy gets worse. Look at this, a chilling tower of doom. And the sun's reporting this here. Uh, in New York, tower of doom, chilling plan for the world's tallest prison in New York City, dubbed the jail scraper. Oh, no. Uh, with a thousand crooks stacked into 40 floor tower. Wow, 40 floors, you can only fit a thousand crooks in there. That's only like what, 20 something per floor? Seems like a pretty big prison to have only a thousand people in there. That's going to barely cover a week's worth of crime, is having room for only 40 uh, or a thousand uh, people in there, a thousand criminals. And speaking of rising crime, take a look at this here. Walmart, quote, is like a prison, moans shopper over new security at self-checkout. As customers agree that, uh, that the measures taken to prevent theft have gotten insane. So pretty much are on camera. Uh, they're checking your receipt. Uh, to me, it doesn't seem too invasive. I mean, uh, I've seen tons of times where you're on camera for using an ATM machine, when you use other self-checkouts. Uh, a shopper has criticized some of Walmart's security measures. It's like a prison. The shoppers compared Walmart to a prison, revealing that they're locked doors and guards monitoring your every move. Well, 
I haven't seen them really lock the door unless somebody's trying to get away that's obviously stealing something, and then I think they'll, they'll lock the doors. But uh, expect more of this, folks. Look at this aisle. Here's a picture here. Everything locked up. Um, of course, baby stuff. Gain, so laundry detergent being locked up. That seems pretty big to steal. Surprised that they're locking up the gain. What's the big deal with gain? Why are so many people stealing gain? Is it that expensive or just laundry detergent in general? I mean, there's a lot more expensive things it seems like that they would be uh, worried about. They've been locking up video games for years. But anyways, let's move on to some other news here I wanted to get into. Look what's happening over in China. China's economy slowed down so much. The consumers are in such big trouble that now the government's backing a zero down payment program to buy new cars. You see what I'm saying here? So just when you think that the economy is turning, the consumer's tapped out, the consumer barely has any more money saved, uh, you know, and uh, delinquencies are starting to increase, then you see governments, and I wouldn't be surprised if it happened here in the U.S., coming out with programs like this. There's out of Reuters. China eases car loan policy for first time since 2008 to boost demand. Right, so another way of keeping things propped up. Normally, when people stop buying things or can't afford them, prices would come down. Normally, you would see car prices come down very quickly when people just get so tapped out and interest rates are too high, car prices are too high, they just can't afford it. So then instead of allowing car prices to drop, what do they do over in China? Well, now they have a zero down payment program to help people buy the overpriced assets. Just like here in California, this uh dream home buyer program helping people get a down payment to buy a home hey how's about just letting prices drop uh with natural market forces when things get too expensive and people can't afford them the natural thing to happen is prices should come down but we've got all this intervention folks everywhere you look not just the stock market the overall economy the banks it's all being propped up folks it should be the cost of living should be i mean a lot lower it should be at least 50 to 70 percent lower than it is right now when you take away the fake money that's being pumped into the banks right now, you would see deflation 50, 60, 70%, maybe even more, maybe even 80, 90%. The thing is, nobody knows because we've never been allowed to have a free market or a naturally functioning economy with organic price discovery. We'll never know. Will we ever know? Well, hopefully someday. I mean, I do think we're going to go back to sane, sound money at some point, but how insane and how ridiculousness. The, the TV show on MTV, <laughs> how ridiculous. I'm not talking about MTV's uh, reality show or the one where they watch the videos. How ridiculous is it that, you know, we don't have, we don't have, uh, we have no idea what the actual price of uh, items, of services, of goods, the cost of living, we have no idea what it should be because we haven't seen a free market in hundreds of years, thousands of years. I mean, you let me know down in the comments. Where does it end, folks? What do you think about this? 70% of people stressed out. Uh, helping people buy cars over in China because the consumers tapped out. The new mega prison, what, 40 floors prison in New York City. Uh, where does it end, folks? You let me know. See you in the next video, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Peace.